I'm Jake Cork, a sculptor and creature designer, and today I'm going to be walking you through my process of conceptualizing a creature in clay. We're going to make a one-of-a-kind, original, super sculpy creature bust, starting with an armature like you see here. But before we can get into clay, we have to bulk it out with aluminum foil. I use the aluminum foil because not only does it save me clay, but it also helps the baking process because it allows you to keep your sculpey thin. And that's very important to getting a good clean bake with no cracks. I start by trying to find the anatomical landmarks of the character. Like I know his head is going to be here, I've got this kind of elongated neck and a, and a hunchback, and immediately I see that in the armature, so it informs my character. So now the tinfoil process is just accentuating those shapes and sort of thinking about what the character's skeleton would look like and what, what his bones would be shaped like. Because that's really what you're doing here, is you're creating the underskeleton of the character. And if you think about the clay as muscle and skin, it really starts to make sense as to why you would do this process and think about the character's skull. The rough out stage is all about getting the armature covered with clay. There's no detail involved. It's all about just getting your basic forms established, finding where the character's rib cage is, finding where his neck is, and adding large pieces of clay and attacking forms aggressively and starting to get the building blocks of your character onto this armature. You can do the first half of your sculpture with nothing but your hands. And you'll be surprised at how many small forms you can bring out and the, the amount of finesse that you can get without sculpting tools. It'll really make you a faster sculptor if you don't rely on loop tools constantly and rakes and things like that for these early stages. Now, we will move on to those and I'll use different sculpting tools throughout the sculpture. But in these early stages, there are no better tools in your hands. The sculpture is still really rough, but we've got the armature covered. And we're starting to find out where the anatomy of this character falls and what kind of shape he is. I'm really focusing on the big forms. I'm not worried about details or eyes or smoothing or any of that stuff. I'm really just trying to find the big masses of shape. And now about to start to make those shapes more specific and add all the little things that will bring this character to life and flesh out his anatomy. I'm working the area on the neck and the collarbone. I'm really trying to get some specific shapes in those. They'll all be covered over with layers of detail and form later, but for now I'm just trying to establish clean, clear shapes. we're ready to start to use tools. One of the first sculpting tools that I like to use is what's called a rake tool. A rake tool is essentially a loop tool with a serrated edge. And what it does is it tears up the surface of the clay, planing down all of the high spots, giving you a nice even surface to work with. I make my own rake tools. I take guitar string. I usually use a heavier guitar string, like a low E string or even a bass guitar string. And I loop it into brass tubing and I pack Super Sculpey around the opening and bake the entire tool in the oven for about a half an hour. Once the Super Sculpey is cooled, it locks the guitar string into place and gives you an extremely durable tool that is very inexpensive to create. As a general rule, you want to almost always go against the form. And what I mean by going against the form is, for example, these chest muscles are laid out in strips, horizontal strips, but if I move the tool vertically against them, it's going to keep softening them down and setting them under a skin layer, as opposed to digging them deeper and making them more prevalent. It's nice to be able to blend things together and soften forms that you can then add on top of and make them more specific, and that's really what the rake tool is great for. It's important to rake the entire surface of the sculpture and not focus your efforts on one little area. The next step is to add eye forms. There are no eyes in here yet because I like to use hard surfaces as eyes. Eye forms are a really good tool because they allow you to sculpt the eyelids and all of the anatomy around the eye without having to worry about interrupting the perfect sphere that you need for an eye. You can use anything for an eye form, beads, marbles, anything works as long as it's the right size for your creature. 
And now it's time to really get specific and move into the secondary forms. These are much smaller pieces of clay that I'll be adding. And I'll be using them to kind of define the transition between forms. So the areas in between each muscle will get special attention. And I'll really start to focus in on the face and find all of the little details and all the little accents that I want. As I work, I'll work one area and move directly to the next. I never stay focused on one small area. I try to work the entire sculpture as one. So now that all the forms are laid out on the sculpture, we can begin the cleanup process. To clean up the sculpture, I'm going to use rubbing alcohol. The purpose of the rubbing alcohol is to just break down the surface of the clay and give you that even working surface that you're looking for in between every stage. I'm also going to use some sponges that I have to help me move this alcohol around the surface and blend all this together. You can see how the alcohol takes away a lot of the tool marks, a lot of the little ripped up bits of clay that are left behind from your rake tool. Don't be afraid to be generous with the amount of rubbing alcohol that you use. It will eventually evaporate from the surface of the clay and your clay will be right back to normal. But if you do work the surface too soon after brushing it down with rubbing alcohol, you may notice that it's a little bit gummy. Now that the sculpture is smoothed down with rubbing alcohol, we can start to think about the details. For this, I like to use very small loop tools. These are two homemade loop tools that are made from the smallest guitar string as well as brass tubing. So we're going to start to render out the face. Detail is all about following the form that you've already established. You want to accentuate the shapes that you spent all that time working on in your form stages with the detail. You don't want to fight them. You don't want to go against them. You should always be working with your anatomy and the things that you've already established. Right now I'm adding the eyelids. This is one of my favorite areas to use the ball stylus tools. They are essentially just a, a needle tool with a ball on the end and they're great for shaping eyelids and lips and getting really soft, subtle curves. This is fine work. You have to pay attention to the shapes that you're laying and make sure that the pieces of clay that you're using are small enough because there's a tendency to make them too large and too thick and you want to add as much detail in this area as you can. Great sources of reference for detail can come from pictures of animal skin, you can look at your own skin, all the little wrinkles and pores is what you should be looking to replicate in your sculpture. I'm adding these little spots and scaly wrinkled areas just to increase the interest there. I think that they are a great way to show texture and they really fit this character. He has kind of a frog-like appearance. Right now I'm sort of using the sponge as a stamp. It's really beneficial, especially if you're trying to work fast, to work the entire piece as one. And these sponges are a great way to do that because they're an excellent way to get a very finished all over texture. I'm using this very tight loop tool to go through and carve out small wrinkles. It's really important when you're sculpting these wrinkles to put a little wave into it. You shouldn't be doing zigzags. A wavy line should be the ideal shape. A wave is a better shape than a straight line for these wrinkles because it makes them feel much more organic. There are no straight lines in nature. I'm using the sharp little loop tool to dig out some areas of the space and add contrast and push some areas deep under the skin.
it's time for the final cleanup. I'm just going to make sure that there are no fingerprints, no little bits of clay anywhere, and just tighten up a few areas that I feel needed as I go over the sculpture. I'm using a combination of alcohol, a brush, and this soft sponge to take away tool marks, fingerprints, unfinished areas, just get everything up to a really nice polish. I'm adding tiny little details that I think will help bring this thing to a close and make the surface dynamic and read well. But after this, it's done and ready to go in the oven. Don't be afraid to call your sculpture finished when you're first starting out. You can keep working on this thing forever, adding detail, but there comes a time when it becomes overworked. So you got to know when to call it finished and when to move on to the next project. Don't be afraid to leave your sculptures and don't be afraid to finish them. So we've covered roughing out form, secondary forms, details and finishing. And now we have a one of a kind finished Sculpey Creature Design Bust, ready to go in the oven and bake solid. I normally bake my Sculpey Busts at around 250 degrees for about an hour and then I turn them down to 225 degrees for another hour or until I think they're finished. You know that Sculpey is finished baking when it loses its sheen. It has this shininess to it, which will be completely gone when the sculpture is baked. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure to share my process with you. Good luck. Make some creatures.